Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. This week on Test Drive, we look at the 1994 Toyota Celica. Now, I normally don't comment upon style because, after all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But on this Celica, there are a couple of styling cues that really caught my eye. The first one starts back here, runs up over the roof line, down the hood, and molds nicely into the outer headlight binnacle. The other thing that really serves to finish off the front end very nicely are the two raised humps over the inner headlights. Under the hood of the new Celica is a 2.2 litre 16 valve 4 that produces 135 horses and 145 pounds feet of torque. While these figures are not that great, the performance is certainly more than adequate. Matched with this willing engine is a four speed automatic that features electronic control. During the upshifts, the ignition timing is temporarily retarded to improve shift quality. When equipped with this powertrain, the Celica requires about eight seconds to reach the 100k mark. For those looking for better performance, I would suggest you go with the manual tranny. It shaves about a full second off this time. The rest of the performance numbers are good, with mid-range performance being better than expected. For the record, we averaged a very respectable 9.1 litres per 100 kilometres, or 31 miles per gallon. The trunk on this Celica has got one major drawback. Slap bang in the middle of the trunk floor is a great big hump. Now that hump houses the full-size spare tyre. Now I'd take the hump along with the full-size spare tyre any day versus one of those Mickey Mouse donut tyres and a nice flat floor. Stopping power for the Celica is provided by a four-wheel disc brake setup that included the optional anti-lock system. These brakes are powerful by any standards, part of the reason being the tandem booster. This gives you the benefits of a larger booster in a compact form. During the brake test, we required just 109 feet to stop from 80K. Short is not the word. The suspension is comprised of McPherson struts at all four corners, which is pretty standard stuff. However, some fancy engineering gets the best out of the system. The upgraded sports suspension gets special two-stage shocks. These things ensure a very controlled ride throughout the range of suspension travel. Add to these sway bars at both ends, anti-dive geometry and a rear suspension that imparts some towing under hard cornering, and you have a setup that provides superior ride and handling as well as excellent accident avoidance characteristics. Now the latter is probably just as well or I might have pulled a Dave Winfield on an unsuspecting seagull. One of the neat pieces of technology on this Celica is a new sheet metal. That's ordinary sheet steel. This is the new vibration damping steel. Now what you have here is like a laminated windshield. There's basically two sheets of steel with a resin center and it's that resin that absorbs a lot of the noise. On a conventional type steel, what you have is an awful lot of padding to stop engine noise from filtering back through the firewall and bugging the passengers. Using this stuff, you actually realize about a 20% weight saving when compared to the traditional way of soundproofing the firewall. What's the big deal? The big deal is that weight saving will help when it comes to fuel economy. Now on this Celica, you can actually hear the difference. That's normal steel. That's the new steel. As well as using the vibration damping steel in the firewall, Toyota have also incorporated it into the rear shock towers. So effective is this stuff that the usual boombox effect found in hatchbacks was virtually non-existent. It also served to quieten the howl from the snow tires on our tester. My pet peeve on this Celica has to do with the driver's side sun visor. Right slap bang in the middle is a mirror that doesn't come with a cover. All you end up seeing is a glorious view of your own lap. Now when you're trying to drive, that type of information is not wanted, not necessary and very distracting. Inside, the GTS comes very well appointed. The dash features a full set of analog gauges that present the right info in a logical fashion, and both driver and passenger are treated to airbags. The radio cassette player comes with its own graphic equalizer and no fewer than six speakers. This ensures wonderful surround sound quality. 
Toyota get a gold star for mounting this unit above the climate controls. The climate controls themselves are logical and large enough to operate with gloves on. The front seats come with huge base and back bolsters. The latter extend up to provide some shoulder support. In short, these things do a great job of keeping the occupant put when you start to use the Celica to its potential. In the back, you'll find some very cramped seats, the saving grace being that they will suffice in an emergency. The seat backs themselves are split and fold and can be locked in the upright position. Well, that's it for this week's test drive. I think it's safe to say that Toyota have improved the new Celica in every area. Ride, handling, performance, and even styling are all better. The only question left in my mind is can they truly justify the $28,000 price tag? If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you like and share us, and also make sure you check out our ongoing contest to win lots of swag from Motoring TV and our sponsors. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. 30 years of Motoring TV, a virtual automotive video goldmine at your fingertips.